and welcome to the first episode of the best way to divorce tv show we have an expert ruth driscoll talking about coercive and controlling relationships and we also have debbie talale who's going to end the show with an amazing healing session so first of all we are going to have a little bit of And with the news, I wanted to talk about three things very briefly. One is about Kristin Cavallari, who accuses Jay Cutler of punishing her in a new divorce filing. And I don't know who they are either. Apparently, they're very famous. She's a, a, a reality TV show and he's some kind of an athlete. Anyway, they are started their divorce, uh, very, very high profile, all looking very peaceful and lovely. But already it's really got quite messy. So what I'm interested to know, and you're Feel free to put this in the comments and put your own views across. She's cross because he won't let her go out and buy a great big house right now for her and the kids. And that would be understandable, except for the fact they haven't sorted out the finances yet. So you just let me know, would you be happy for your spouse to go out and spend a very large sum on a great big house before you have even managed to sort out what the financial split is but yeah let me know your views put it in the comments feel free to share at any point this show because we want as many people as possible to know how to have a better way to divorce the second story that grabbed my attention it was in the UK Daily Mirror and it's this guy who is so angry that his wife has what he calls baby trapped him which means apparently she's put holes in the condom and had a third pregnancy that he didn't want they've already got two children by the way and he has this whole sob story about how unfair it is and during lockdown he's been planning their divorce and setting the whole thing up but without telling her so on the one hand he's complaining about her dishonesty but on the other hand he's setting up a whole divorce without telling her and my my question to you is, and please put it in the comments, is, yeah, okay, if she, she was so desperate to have a child, that, that's not a reason to force a pregnancy, shall we say. But what about having a conversation with a, with a, with a therapist, with a counsellor? You know, I could easily suggest people they could talk to. And they've missed that bit out entirely. And we all know that if they had sat down and had that conversation a while back, if it's such a, a big deal for her to have another child, then of course she would have been the one having the divorce from him. But what bothers me is the way he says he set it all up, he's got it all sorted, all the financials, but without telling her. I think he's a little bit confused that when you come to divorce, it's probably quite a good idea to have those conversations together, lockdown or not. And of course the great thing about using mediators in lockdown is they are working on the internet like the rest of us so you don't have to wait till lockdown ends to have a peaceful conversation with a trained professional and the last bit about the news that i wanted to bring to you is uh, it's a daily mail article that i was quoted in and uh, the good thing about that article it was very well written by the way really good uh, journalist and she told some uh, lovely stories about people who are in the process of divorce and they are locked in lockdown so that's pretty stressful so she she shared their stories and they spoke anonymously about that situation and it was pretty poignant and nobody wants to be in that situation but what really caught my imagination was how some of them uh, one particular father had really seen a different side of the family life by being there with the kids and he said it had affected Pat softened his approach to the divorce, uh, seeing things much more from the children's point of view. So there have been some good sides to it as well as the, the stress with, that goes with all of that. But what really cheesed me off with the Daily Mail is they didn't put in the link to bestwaytodivorce.co.uk which gives people access whether in the UK or the US to free resources and they just missed it out which I was really upset about and because uh, if I'm going to spend my time for nothing helping uh helping find people for an art uh, for a for a, a, a lot of what was in the end a very good article yeah i'd rather be spending that with helping people for for free who are actually going through divorce and i do do quite a lot of pro bono work um if you want to know more about that join the best way to divorce uh, facebook group and you'll be able to get a free session from me as a as a welcome to the group now oh the good thing about the daily email which is i thought was quite interesting is 
if you are interviewed by them, even if it's anonymously, they will always make sure that you check through that interview before it goes into the paper. And apparently the other UK uh, newspapers don't uh, don't require that from the journalists. I wonder how it is in the US. If there's any of you who have shared your stories with US newspapers, let me know. Again, pop it in the comments and share. We have come to the part of the show that is about Ask the Expert. When I came out of my abusive relationship, I would scarcely have believed the journey that I have been on. At the time this was happening to me, I was the head teacher of a challenging inner city primary school. So I was a leader and dealing with challenging situations every day. Since going on this journey, I've discovered so much more about myself. I've become um, an international number one best-selling author. I have also am um, a TEDx speaker and I'm an award-winning speaker. I'm a mentor and a coach and a trainer. And I really feel that I've discovered my purpose, why I'm here to help those who are in manipulative, abusive, controlling relationships into empowerment and freedom. The most important thing is to be able to master your emotional state because the, the problem is that if you are being triggered by this other person's behavior and it's causing stress and anxiety in the way that you feel, in the way that you're operating on a daily basis, could mean you're losing sleep, your appetite's gone. All of those things are happening. Blood pressure's perhaps running higher than it should. So it's important to gain control of your emotional state, not because that's disregarding the issues that you're going through and that you're feeling. You think of it almost like a strategic approach, that you will be able to handle things more efficiently if you are in a state of calm. Now, the... the um, quickest way to do that is through your breathing patterns. Our breathing patterns are dictated by the emotions that we feel. And so, and it's something that you can practice as well so that, you know, you can, you can access it um, quickly when you need to. And that's just breathing in deeply, breathing through the nostrils so that your breath actually presses down on the diaphragm and then breathing out. If you're on your own, breathe out through your mouth. If you're in front of um, the person that's causing the issues for you, then breathe out through the nostrils because what you don't want is to look like you're hyperventilating. You know? So just try and keep the, the breathing natural. But the important thing is that the breathing presses down on the diaphragm because that stops that sort of um, fluttering um, feeling that that um, can increase that that sense of panic and anxiety inside you so if as far as you can stay in a state of calm and the reason that that's important is because it will help you to think more clearly it's important that you do not see yourself as a victim it's important that you put yourself in the position where you realize you do have choices. They may feel very limited to you right now, but by putting yourself in that position of power in the sense that you are taking responsibility for what happens, that means you're then in a place where you are more solution focused, that you start seeing small steps. What tends to happen is that we look at the, the huge um, gap that's in front of us and we don't want to step into that gap because it feels way too huge to be able to deal with so you've got to take things a bit of a time uh, uh, you know a step at a time and that does mean having a, a strategy of patience around this um, but here's another really useful tip because if you label somebody a narcissist then you've drawn a conclusion about that person. But, you know, it, it may be that your, your analysis is not quite correct, or even if it is correct. The important thing is to look at the behaviors that are causing the problem. 
So you never label the person. You just look at the behaviors and the issue that that behavior is calling. And then it becomes just a little bit more manageable. It means you can look at a strategy around how do I deal with that particular behavior rather than this whole person, which again, that's like that huge gap that's right there in front of you. Now we come to the next stage. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of education. I wanted to talk about reality. I'm taking a little something from our uh, from the divorce uh, masterclass, I call it, which is the, uh, the divorce discovery journey. Incidentally, the QR code that you saw earlier, uh, once you go back through the video, if you access that course for the next two days, you'll be able to get the whole of the section about uh, the the terrain, the dealing with the terrain, all the preparation that you need to do uh, from completely for free. You won't even need to put in your card details. So if you're catching this on a replay, you better hurry because I, I can only keep that available for uh, two days. So I just wanted to briefly go through a, put one, one little aspect of it and it was about the reality. So if you're going on a voyage, on a journey, you've got, the more you know about the terrain, the better. You don't want to be flailing around in the dark, making mistakes. Um, I often talk about the Bermuda Triangle of a nasty court-based divorce. And a lot of these things are so avoidable, but you need to get real upfront about what it's really about. So some people are under a huge misconception. They think that divorce, uh, the whole divorce system, and this is true not just in the UK, but in the US as well and many other countries, that somehow it's benevolently created to help families to go from being a, 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 a family into a into what would be, I would like to call a an extended family. And the, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. The, the system is essentially set up to help you end a contract, the contract of marriage. Uh, a lot of it is very much about admin. So it's important to realise that that can cause problems and be aware of that. It's not that there's any malevolent forces at work. It's not about lawyers being bad. It's simply that that's just the way the system is. Now, we'd be great to change that system. That's something I would definitely like to do. And if you, anyone has comments on that, and ways they think we can do that, that would be great. One of the ways I hope to do that is through running more divorce financial workshops, which are a very accessible way for people to come into finding out more, not just about the finances, but also about dispute resolution. And another question I have for any lawyers who are watching, please tell me, because I'm always interested in this, how much of your marketing budget is spent on dispute resolution? How much do you promote mediation? How much do you promote collaborative law? I often say to law firms, why are you keeping collaborative law in the cupboard? A lot of people have never even heard about it. And another thing about the reality check is you need to be aware that just because a lawyer says, oh, we do, we work very collaboratively, that is not the same as being a collaborative lawyer. It's a very specialised training. Um, we'll be able to give you more info that, information about that on future shows. And certainly, if you go into the um, Best Way to Divorce Masterclass, you'll be able to find out all about that and resources on the bestwaytodivorce.co.uk website as well. Um, so what the main thing to know about the the get, getting real is not to get confused about things like mediation is counseling i mean literally i spoke to someone this week whose partner was pushing for mediation very early in the process obviously thinking it's kind of a bit like relationship counseling so a lot of people still get confused about that so my advice for for you is in the reality of a divorce situation just like if you're going on any journey, you want to know what the landscape is and you want to prepare and you want to make sure that before you go to your mediation, you've got the facts, you've got the figures, um, you do your homework basically, because that makes an enormous difference to not just how well the mediation is going to work or the collaborative law process, whichever dispute resolution process you choose to use, but it also means it's going to save you a lot of money. So finally, just wanted to talk about um, I guess my final words on this is know the landscape, shine a light on it by doing research, understand the process. It makes it much less scary and it won't leave you flailing around in the dark and making mistakes that you just don't really need to make. So now we're going to move 
into shared stories section. It was a very acrimonious separation with a lot of bitterness on each side. But don't ever remember being sat down and told what was happening, the facts of the situation. What I did hear was the bitter comments from each side about the other, and what I saw was all the revenge tactics being thrown around with not much regard for my sister and I stuck in the middle. I never thought it affected me that much growing up. It was such a normal part of my life. But it bothered me when I'd hear the comments about the other. I don't think they ever thought about the fact that it wasn't just their ex-partner that they were insulting, it was my mum or my dad. But it wasn't until a few years ago, when I reached my twenties and started to think more seriously about my romantic relationships and the future of them, that I realised how much of an effect their divorce had had on my views of relationships and of marriage. We are all a product of our experiences, and I can trace many of the issues I have now with, within relationships, commitment, trust, and even simple things like how to treat a partner, back to the divorce and what followed. I was never given a chance to talk it through with somebody and my parents were too wrapped up in their own bitterness at the time to take a step back and think about how it would affect their children. I think that's why I think mediation and counselling are so important for everyone involved in a divorce. The effects can be long lasting and life changing and I see a lot of defensiveness from parents going through a divorce. No one wants to admit that they are about to do something, however necessary it may be, that will have a negative effect on their child. But it's so important to address it early and to address it well, and your children will thank you for it. I always find that really moving. Those pictures came from, they were real pictures by children uh, in uh, Splitsville, it was, uh, which they kindly gave me permission to use. And that uh, voiceover was uh, a young lady who actually came to uh, interview me a few years ago and when she told me her story and her experiences I asked if she could share that and she very generously did and I think her story must reflect the experience of many many people whose parents have been through an acrimonious divorce uh, please feel free to share your own experiences in the comments now we're going to just have a quick round up because I want the mood to again then get really calm because we're going to go to Debbie Tallalay who's going to do a healing session for us to complete the show with. But for the moment, get your phones ready. Now, if you don't manage to do all of this in time, don't panic. This is going to be remaining on the Facebook page, on YouTube and in the Best Way to Divorce Facebook group. So you and also should be on Twitter and Periscope all being well. So I'm going to take you through some good things that we've got here. So with the Divorce uh, Financial Workshop here, you can access uh, the, it's a holding place for the moment and you'll be, be told about the next, um, the next workshops that are gonna be coming up soon. So you just click on there and you'll be able to be kept up to date. And then we also have Debbie. Debbie's gonna be coming up soon uh, doing the healing session. But if you use that QR code, um, you will be able to access a whole free series of videos which are about theta healing which is a very powerful form of healing and those videos will show you how to get access to that and tell you all about it. This is the QR code for Families Need Fathers and here we have the, uh, you can go straight to their website and access all kinds of great resources. And last but not least, we have the lovely Ruth, who is offering the seven steps to conflict-free communication download guide. As I said, at the end of the show, once this is settled in, you'll be able to go back and find these if you haven't managed to do that as we go through now. So now we're getting ready to go through, hoping Debbie's ready, and we're gonna go. Thank you for coming into the show and you're going to see us out with a lovely healing process. Perhaps if you can uh, just tell us a little bit about it first. Well, yes. Yeah. Can you hear? Oh, uh, right. This, this uh, healing is designed to clean you down from all the accumulated negativity and fear uh, which stick to us. Um, no matter how upbeat you are, everybody around us is, is quite emotional at the moment and it's sticking to us. So I want to clean you down so that you feel a little lighter and less burdened by events. Okay. 
So if everyone would just close their eyes, please. And putting you under a shower of universal love so that you can be cleaned inside and out. And feel that shower on your body, on your head. And now visualize a strong white light that is being sent down by spirit through the top of your head. And it comes to the top chakra. And view it as a sort of, um, it comes to a little barrier there for your top chakra. And make sure that chakra is spinning well. It is purple around this white light. Activate it with the light. And then a valve opens as soon as that chakra is activated and the light streams down to the next chakra, which is also in your head, and it is your third eye. And that is a dark blue. And see that spinning around the white light. And if it's a little bit dull, just stay with it for a second. If it's not spinning correctly, if it's all over the place, just give it the white light so that it can write itself. And then we see a valve opening in that and the light streaming down to the next chakra, which is in your throat and it is the chakra for peace. And it is a light blue. And see that spinning around the white light and feel the, the peace. Take it to the parts of your body that you feel hold anxiety. Visualize a chakra opening and see this white light streaming down to the next chakra, which is your heart and which is green and revive that chakra. See a valve opening and let that light stream down to the next chakra, which is in your solar plexus and is gold. And see the valve opening again to the next chakra, which is orange, which is about relationships. And then the light comes to the last chakra, your base chakra, which is deep red, and see that spinning. And the light passes through your body and down to your feet and starts to pool around your feet. So you're standing in a white light puddle, which grows and grows and becomes immense. And anything that is negative and not of the light is absorbed by the light. And see that light growing and growing. So eventually you're in a lake of white light. Now, we're going to clear off the negativity. So we take our imaginary bazookas out and we fire them at the dark cloud over our head. And see that cloud shatter and splinter. And fire that bazooka at the cloud behind the small of your back and see that shatter and splinter. And we are now going to peel ourselves like a grape of the various negative emotions that we might be holding. So, anxiety, peel yourself of anxiety. Dread, peel yourself of dread. Grief, peel yourself of grief. How about hopelessness or despair? Peel yourself of these negative emotions. And now we're going to attract to ourselves the things that we would like to be in our lives. So joy. Breathe it in and breathe it down right through your body. Connection with others, breathe it in. Hope, breathe it in. What about faith? Breathe that in. 
And of course, you can continue for as many attributes as you want. So now I'm going to reconnect us to our higher selves. So bring up your energy from your heart right the way through the top of your head and let it stream upwards to the creator, whatever you call the creator, and make that connection. And then receive from the creator a return stream of energy which enters through the top of your head right the way through all your chakras down to your base chakra and back up to your heart. Breathe in. And we're going to go back up again from the heart through the top of the head to your soul. And returning from the soul is another stream of energy which is going to go through the top of your head down through to your base chakra and back up to your heart. Breathe it in. And now, I like to say three times, I reclaim my power. I reclaim my power. I reclaim my power. And putting around us as a final step, the protection of the earth. And this is a shamanistic ritual, seven circles. So we put around the first circle and the second, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh. Breathe it in. And please open your eyes. I hope you're all feeling a little bit lighter and clearer. <laughs>